What is up, People Dead fans? In this video, I am going to cover something that I have been requested to show, been messaged about numerous times, and finally, I'm gonna let you guys in on how I do this. And it's something that I don't do anymore because it affects my health. So um, this is why I'm gonna show you how to make a lightweight chainsaw bar. So the style of bar that we're really gonna concentrate on in this video is Army of Darkness and Ash vs. Evil Dead. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to need to buy the bar. A real bar, that, that style of Oregon bar, 20 inch bar that uh, Oregon sells that was used in Army of Darkness and Ash vs. Evil Dead. Uh, the best thing to do is get a chain combo with it because if you have a chain combo, the fake bar that you're going to make will fit with it perfectly. You just don't want to buy some random chain because then you're going to be cutting links unless you're trying to save money, but you're going to be spending a lot more time cutting links out. So the first thing you want to do is you want to buy a real bar. You, what you're going to use that for is a stencil. Now you're going to have the bar with the chain off of it, of course. You want a piece of poster board and you're gonna sit your bar on it and you're gonna make a big stencil. Another thing is if you are not planning on using this real bar for anything else, you can literally bypass putting it on to poster board and put directly on the fiberglass, which I'll talk about here in just a minute. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make another stencil. Now right here is this line that separation line. You're gonna to wanna to make a stencil of just that. Now what you do is what you did back in school as a kid, just get a piece of paper and just rub something over it so it shows the indents and everything that you need. Now this stencil right here, you're gonna to wanna to transfer that onto a separate piece of poster board. You're gonna to wanna to have all this as a stencil. Put that on a whole separate piece of poster board. That's one piece you definitely want on a piece of poster board. And you're going to want to make sure you got all these little rivets and there's little dots right there. You can kind of see them. You're going to want to mark those out too by either poking a hole in the paper stencil that you're making after you've already rubbed it down. Uh, rub down the piece of paper with whatever to leave your markings just so you have that and you transfer all that over to the cardboard. So you're going to want to have that because this size is going to be the exact same for the other size. The one thing that you're going to want to remember too is this rivet right here and that one right here rivet i don't know what you really call those are the same or distance over here they are different and i will show you close up here in a minute so the reason why you want to stencil with that is you're going to transfer that over to your fake bar now let me show you how you start your fake bar so let's take a closer look. You got these rivets right here. You got these little indents, these little round circles. This line right here. You have this piece right here, this piece right here. And on the other side, see how those are very similar to this other side? One right here, and this one is different. These rivets right here with these holes. And also on the other side. You can find those at Ace Hardware. Those exact same size, what you have to do is you get those and you have to cut the ends off of them because they will have ends on them. You have to cut those off. You can also find this at Ace Hardware that's got a little hexagonal kind of area inside. You can find that too. You're gonna have to cut the ends off, the threaded end, and kind of flatten it as much as possible. These sizes right here are the exact same size as like, uh, Thumbtacks, the one, the flat ones that you get that are like yellow, blue, green, they come in an assortment of colors. They're the exact same size. So you need three of those, one of these, you need five of those, and then five of the flat ones on the other side. Like I said, Ace Hardware has those. Don't worry if you can only find the ones on this side in gold because you're gonna paint them. So you're gonna need, th need those. And it really depends on how accurate you want to get this. Now, when it comes to making the fake bar, you have three pieces. You get the two outer sides and you have an inside stiffener. On Ash vs. Evil Dead, on their fake bars, the outside, it was made of aluminum. 
The reason why I don't do that on mine is that aluminum really, really screws with me. And what they did is this line right here, they just drew that on. A lot of this stuff was just drawn on. Uh, so if you want something super accurate, this is uh, super accurate to a real chainsaw bar look, or if you want to go with the show look, that's kind of how you do that. It's two aluminum sides on the outside, but if you want to go with something with the indent, this is how I do it. Now, I got two pieces right here. This is what I have right here. This has just been sitting around. One side and then the other side. So what this is, it's fiberglass. And what you can do is pick up a sheet of this at Home Depot. It's a shower backing. You can see this kind of pebbled side right here and the flat side. You want the pebbled side on the inside. So you take that sheet and then you got your stencil, your bar, or you can just lay your bar down and stencil it out onto that sheet of fiberglass. You cut out both sides. You wanna sand them to make them uniform. So one side's not sticking out over the other. This is kind of a reject piece I just have sitting around. Of course, and then after everything lines up and it's the easiest way to make it line up is to actually like tape areas down and kind of sand it and then move the tape over here and sand it and sand it until it's all uniform. The next thing you want to do is with your other stencil is laid on the end here, draw it out and then with an X-Acto knife or something of that nature, you want to start etching that in. It's not, it's not easy to do. It is time consuming, but that's what you have to do for both sides. For these, you want to measure your holes from your real bar and the distance across so you know exactly where this is at. And the reason why you want this line down first is to find out, find out exactly where this one goes because from that space and that spacing, it'll give you that exact measurement of where that one's at too. Same thing with the rivets right here, the rivet holes and measure out those holes. When it comes down to these little holes right here, what you're gonna wanna do since you have your stencil, there's a spider. What you're gonna do is get a drill bit and after you have these marked, is you wanna drill it in just a little bit, not much. You want the exact size and you might have to sand it down a little bit, but you don't wanna drill all the way through just enough so you get those little indent, round little indents. So on the end here, um, you want to cut that open because it's easier to slide your chainsaw bar into place rather than kind of push it in the place uh, with a closed back. So now you got these two pieces. The next thing you want to do is make a stiffener. All right, now we're going to talk about stiffeners. You got your two separate pieces here. You need to have a piece that will actually not make these things flop around. So you need to stiffen it up. One thing you can do and I've done before is use a steel bar, an eighth inch steel bar and thickness eighth inch in the middle here. And then it still gives it some weight, it's still pretty heavy. The best thing to use is aluminum. Now the aluminum that the show used is the same aluminum that I have recreated one of those before for um, a certain customer and uh, for the outer sides. And I use that same thing on the inner sides. Now, the thing about that metal is that aluminum, it's super stiff, it's an eighth inch thick, and it's, I don't know where to buy it. My father-in-law who runs a hot rod shop just happened to have some. Um, and if you're wondering what the likeness of it is, it is exactly the same aluminum that they use for road signs. Now, do not go out and start taking road signs to make one of these things because you can get in a lot of trouble. You can pay a lot of fines, maybe go to jail, who knows? Don't do that. I'm telling you right now, it's not worth it. So, but that aluminum does make it super lightweight and will not flop around if you can find it. So you're gonna have to go searching all over the place. And if you don't know what that aluminum is, you can just Google it. So, but that's, that's what really messes with me is that aluminum, that just the fumes from that aluminum, even wearing a respirator, um, gave me permanent throat damage. 
So that's why I don't do them anymore. Even, even after that happened and I would do it outside and stuff, just having the fumes in the air a little bit would mess with me. So I'm, I don't do them. Uh, so if you do, do that, use that aluminum, please be very safe. Do it in a ventilated area, wear a respirator. So when you got your stiffener, you got that metal, what you wanna do is about this far in, just enough or a little bit more so that chain can fit inside of here, that little rigid edge that fits inside of the bar so it has room. So you wanna measure that out all the way around and then the same thing over here. So, and you wanna trace that out and then you have your stiffener. You just put that on that sheet, cut it out, boom, you got your stiffener. Now you place your stiffener back onto here. Don't glue it on here yet. You wanna place your stiffener on here, trace that around. And what you're gonna do is that little area where that stiffener is gonna fit, you wanna sand flat that inside. You wanna get rid of that pebbled shit. You wanna get it flat because what it also does it will sandwich in better and fit better and closer to what a real chainsaw bar um, separation gap is. You do not want to sand the pebbling on the outer edge because if you got more there, like a little ledge and your stiffener is set inside, it will close that gap again, closer and closer and closer. Cause you don't want that gap to be like that. You want to be, pretty close you want it to be about a 16th of an inch maybe a little bit closer I mean it's got to be really close um, so that's what you want to do there so once you sand it both sides down on the inside and you take your stiffener you glue it in one thing I do suggest it's kind of up to you is not to cut this area out of your stiffener yet but just depends on what you want to do. The only reason I say that is you can drill it exactly where you need it. <clears throat> Cause if you take too much out of that stiffener, you're going to have a huge gap or it's going to look funky. You can actually drill a hole here, here, here. And when you paint it, it's easier to kind of hang up. Uh, but that's something you have to really finesse with. So it's kind of up to you if you want to cut that area out first or not. So first thing you do, you take, Whatever glue you want, it's got to be a really hard glue. You can use two-part epoxy. You could even use Loctite gel glue. It works too. Um, and you want to put that in this area. Just don't get too much around these holes because you'll have to try to cut, clean those out, which is the pain. Glue your stiffener to one side. <clears throat> Make sure everything's flat. Your stiffener has to be exactly straight or you're going to have a big curve in your bar. So glue that in there. Once that's dry, put glue on the other side of that stiffener or on the side of here, and then make sure that glue doesn't like, it, as soon as it contacts, does not settle because you might be off a little bit. If you're off a little bit, it's gonna be wonky. You want it exactly the same way across. You want it to be uniform all the way through. <clears throat> that's what you want. So once you're done with that, once it's all set, you're gonna have a nice straight bar. It's gonna look pretty good. Next thing is, you got your rivets and say so you cut your ends off, you wanna fit them in there to make sure that they lay flush. And the same thing with that other piece right here with the octagonal uh, insert. And then with the, uh, uh, Man, I lost straight of thought. Oh, the thumbtacks, you want to take the sharp end off the back. So you just glue all those in there. That's all you do. Loctite gel glue works great. Just don't overuse the glue because it might, you know, ruin the look. One thing I forgot to mention right before you do that, before you glue those in, you want to take any kind of bumpiness off this flat side. Just, you don't have to take a ton off. You wanna make sure that you do have this, that etched marking in there still. If it starts to fade because you're sanding it, you don't have to sand it too hard. Just go through and etch it again while you still have it there. So you can sand it before, you can sand it then. Uh, you're doing a lot of stuff with this, so you probably have to do at least 
if you would have sanded before, at least another run through lightly to make sure everything's nice and not scratched up. So you don't want to use too abrasive of a sandpaper. So yeah, makes sense because you're going to mar the crap out of this. this. This stuff sands very, very easily. So once you got all that stuff glued in and it's together, next thing you want to do is you want to paint it. And this is where I said that hanging it helps because you just got that stiffener still in here. You haven't cut that completely out yet. You have, you drilled holes in it. This little gap here on the stiffener. So you can hang it and paint it. When it comes to silver paint, don't go cheap with silver paint. You go cheap with silver paint, it ends up looking gray right off the bat. You want something that looks vibrant and looks like metal. Uh, when we seal it, it will dull it down a little bit. It'll dull it down like this. This is a real bar though. Uh, because any kind of clear doles down anything that's shiny. It doesn't matter how, uh, how glossy it is. It just gives a glossy look, but doles the color down a bit. So if that happens to yours, I'm warning you right now, that's what happens. But it protects it from getting beat up. Because if you're at a convention, you're going to hit it with something at some point. And on Ash vs. Evil Dead, it wasn't super shiny. They did dole it down. Army of Darkness, it did stay shiny. You can rub and buff it after you're done with all your paint. That's a way you can get the shine back. Uh, and rub and buff is just like, like graphite powder and stuff. And you just rub it in. But you want to do that when it's completely done to get that shine back. If that's what look you're going for. <clears throat> so you get your paint done. And then once that's dry, it's going to be completely silver. Then you want to add your black paint. You want to just, you have to do it by hand. You can't do the method of spraying it black and sanding it down because you'll take the silver off. So you're going to have to do it all by hand with some kind of acrylic paint. I wouldn't suggest oils for this because you really can't seal oils that well. So an acrylic paint, paint it up black wherever you want it, and then you seal it up. Uh, the best sealer that I have found is that like Hobby Lobby or Michaels, they sell this acrylic spray sealer and gloss or semi-gloss, high gloss, flat matte. They, they use all that. Uh, when it comes to the bar, I do suggest either a uh, satin or flat. It's kind of up to you. If you want the best look, I'd say flat. But you got it sealed up, boom, that part's done. Let it dry. After that, you take your chain and you want to attach it to this bar. You don't want a lot of tension because it will pull through and look all wonky you want to attach the chain to it. Now, if you want it con safe with a real chain, these barbs right here, you will have to cut all these off. Just what you have to do. It's time consuming, it sucks, but that's something you'll have to do if you want it safe for certain conventions. Some conventions don't care. A lot of them do. So you have to cut all of them off, use a Dremel, grinder, however. So once you've done that, you want to use like a, I think it's like E3000 or 1000. Uh, let me get it and I'll show you what it is. So this is the glue, E6000. It is clear, self-leveling. This is industrial, which means it's stronger than shit. Um, you definitely want the clear. Now, the nice thing about it, if you get a little extra on your bar when you're putting the chain on, a lot of it, a lot of times, if it's not attached to two things, it will really just start to rub off with your finger and not take the finish off while it's drying. So if it's wet and you get a little bit on the bar, just wait a little bit. But don't wait too long. Just you don't want it too wet because if you start rubbing it in, because then it'll rub into it and it'll look like crap. So this is the glue you want. <clears throat> so you want to take this and this, and you got to do it very carefully. And you want one with a sharp nozzle all the way around into that gap. Then you take your chain and then with your chain, it's best to do it from the top. You sit it inside the gap and you press it in, make sure it's flat, it's even. This stuff doesn't set right away, which is nice. You wanna press it and get it all even and then turn it upside down with the chain. Now, right before you put the chain on, because I forgot to mention this, after it's done being sealed and painted, you wanna cut out the rest of that stiffener. So, forgot to mention that. You wanna cut out the rest of that stiffener. And then you want to put the chain on 
and then you can actually let it sit by hanging it by the chain. And then while it's hanging, as soon as you sit it down, you wanna make sure there is no gaps, it's sitting flush, and then let that dry. Once that is dry, you're done. You have a fake chainsaw bar that's super lightweight, but a lot of times your chainsaw will actually still sit up like this, which is cool. It's a lot of work, but if you're going to conventions dressed as ash in any capacity with a chainsaw hand, this will save a lot of headache and a lot of weight because you can really just wing it around. It's super light. So that's how you do that. If you uh, are going to a convention to where they won't let you use any kind of chains, there's always other options like bicycle chains, things like that. I don't go that route because bicycle chains are super thick, but people have made them out of uh, wood, things like that. It's going to be a little, it's going to be a little bit wider because that bike chain is wider, but to get a look of it being real, this is what you're going to have to do. Do not message me anybody about measurements on anything on these bars because I'm not going to do it. I don't have that much time on my hands to do that all day uh, because I just don't. If you have any questions about it, you got to go buy one. Or if you don't have the money to go buy one of these, go to a local hardware store or Google measurements, things like that. That's where you can find that information. But the best way to do it is to actually have one of these real bars on site so you can always reference back to that and always have something you can make a stencil from. So with that being said, that is the way to, I, that's the way I've done it. That's the way to make it look real. Like I said, there's other options, but that's just the way I do it. So until next time, you guys stay groovy.